Hi! Welcome to this part of my Vampire the Masquerade 20th Anniversary Edition Core Book Multi-Part Review. This time I'm going to talk about the Toreador clan and the Tremere. These two clans offer great opportunities when it comes to role-playing that particular individual, that way of playing Vampire the Masquerade uh, besides just investigating or fighting these uh, characters are great for social interaction and some are more unusual ways of playing the game as well. Now let's talk about the Toreador. The Toreador represent something that is quite unique in the scheme of Vampire the Masquerade or in the whole aspect of the Jihad. The Toreador teach you that being an undead bloodsucker isn't so horrible if you look at it uh, from a different angle. These vampires are the artists of the entire um, political mess that is Vampire the Masquerade. They are there to enforce the Masquerade because as long as things remain somewhat peaceful and civilized, the Toreador have an excuse to um, develop art, indulge themselves in any sort of pleasure or any sort of trend that exists at the moment. They are all about uh, parties and social gatherings and trying to um, outperform their peers, whether it be in, in fashion or in music, in almost anything. So the Toreador have a very unique way of expressing that aspect of the night in role-playing games, where it's not just another section, uh, an another moment in which the sun goes down. The Toreador um, teach other vampires that when it's night time, the, the entire world enters a different dimension. <laughs> of monstrous beauty. And some other clans consider them to be like somewhat wasteful of, of, it, of their eternity as vampires. They think that they're all about just having fun and doing nothing important. But I guess you could say that uh, through the interactions between the Toreador and the Ventru, who are considered uh, officially and sometimes unofficially the rulers of the masquerade, the Toreador are that source of inspiration for other vampires. And through their art, through their expression, and their attitude, and their charisma, they move other vampires, they have a way of controlling the emotions of those that are living and undying. And so it's quite common for a Toreador to have like a group or cult of personality sort of thing going on around them, even composed of mortals and sometimes even other kindred or other vampires. So you could say that, in a sense, the Ventru are the brains of the Masquerade, and the Toreador could be the heart of the Masquerade. In fact, the, the Toreador are one of the, the pillars that support uh, the entire Masquerade. Toreadors... Mm, it's quite difficult to again to like pinpoint them in a specific stereotype because they are artists they contain all sorts of that the clan contains a lot of different dilettantes and visionaries and um, they have all sorts of passions they consider themselves to be like the protectors or the ones that preserve beauty in all its forms so the Toreador also have a very... Um, a great variety of styles and appearances when it comes to the way they look and they dress. 
some look a bit more on the classical side, uh, some look somewhat preposterous or too flamboyant. Uh, it depends on what they are looking for in, in their uh, expression of style. Some look a bit more avant-garde, uh, some look a bit more anachronistic. So it's, it's very difficult to, to tell who is a toreador just by looking at a particular vampire. Perhaps the only point in common is that they, only want, they always want to be somewhat flashy. Even when they are trying to be subtle, there is something that um, calls out your attention towards them. When it comes to their havens, for the most part, they enjoy luxury, they enjoy um, sophistication, pretty much any uh, mansion or apartment that looks suitable for parties and social gatherings. The Toreadors will love those places, although there are some Toreadors that are more on the bohemian side of things and they uh, enjoy places that look more like decadent studios or galleries of art. And they embrace humans from almost any place and, and any station as long uh, as they show either some appreciation for the, uh, the finer arts or what they consider to be art, so that's somewhat debatable. But they also embrace humans that they consider incredibly beautiful as a, some sort of way like uh, um, freezing that moment of beauty for eternity. So, Toreadors are usually quite high when it comes to, or um, quite powerful in their social expression. They have social attributes, they also value uh, intelligence as well, as uh, contacts and resources. They're all about uh, expressing themselves and communicating with others through any expression of art that they fancy. This is also helped by their clan disciplines of auspects, celerity and presence because through auspects they are quite perceptive of, of their surroundings. Even They can even perceive, of course, uh, things such as auras and they can uh, see the uh, emotions and intentions of others. Not perfectly so, but it does give, give them an, an edge and, a, and an advantage. So th they are quite suitable for... Uh, um, operations of diplomacy or, or uh, when they want to uh, find out something in a, perhaps any sort of um, council or reunion. And because of their celerity, they are also quite skilled. At, uh, perhaps there is a Toreador sculpture and uh, he is able to create some masterpieces in just a few days that will otherwise take considerable time because they move quite fast. And when, when it comes to combat, they also use celerity when using firearms, or perhaps if, if they have invested some points on strength, um, they can also be skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but not as effective or as efficient as some of the more martially inclined clans. And they also have presence, which allows them to either uh, attract others towards them, uh, or even uh, intimidate them with uh, nightmarish gestures and gases. That could also be uh, something useful in survival and combat. When it comes to their weaknesses, the Toreador become too fascinated at times with different pieces of art or even uh, people or even other vampires. They have to make uh, a self-control or instinct role, otherwise they become paralyzed, infatuated, at perhaps looking at a, a painting or listening to some sort of uh, beautiful song, although that's more related to another clan that I will talk about in some other part of this review. So they get uh, in some risky situations towards this fascination. Perhaps it could be quite deadly if a Toreador um, um, becomes fascinated by the exact moment before sunrise, uh, that Toreador could be burned by, by the sun. So there are some opportunities for the storyteller to mess around with you using that weakness. The Torador are um, organized, but their hierarchy is quite shallow, some vampires would say. Sometimes they are only valued because they were embraced by a vampire who is quite tasteful in art or um, 
keeps up with uh, the current tutorial or trends or perhaps is even a trend setter. But if that toreador falls from grace by uh, dressing inadequately or performing something out of style or out of place, uh, it's quite easy to fall from grace in toreador circles, but you could also uh, regain or recover your placer status if you do something quite daring in what they consider art. In this edition, in the 20th anniversary edition, the toreador feel a bit more spiteful. Mm. In former editions they feel a bit more respectful towards other clans, but here that they, they feel like they're always either uh, envious or jealous or perhaps have a very strong sense of rivalry to towards other clans that are uh, also on the aesthetic side of things and here they also look at uh, martially inclined classes to be uh, too um, unsophisticated let's say and that's a contrast with the other editions because for example in the other editions they have a somewhat high opinion of the Asimites they consider them to be beautiful in their art of assassination but that they should be kept at a distance but here in this book they say the Asimites they are blood-soaked barbarians and when it comes for example Mm, the La Sombra, they, they seem quite spiteful or, or perhaps, I don't know what their deal is with them, but it, they say, La Sombra, if I look like they do, I'd hide in the, sh in the dark too. So they're a bit like mocking the La Sombra. And in other editions of Vampire the Masquerade, the Toreador uh, have respect for the Ventru, they consider them like to be the leaders needed for the, for the Masquerade. But here they say, Ventru, why are older brothers always such corpulent bully bullies? So, uh, yeah, here, here the Toreadors aren't exactly presented as um, very optimistic in their opinions towards other clans. And I do have to comment on the artwork. Um, this version of the artwork, I don't like it. I, I like the color combination of her attire. Now I'm sounding like a Toreador. And, and I like the glass that she's holding that looks uh, quite unorthodox. Um, Something that a toreador would, would be trying to do to impress others, to, to tell others, hey, look at me. But uh, th that woman, looks, she looks kind of mannish. Mm, not exactly the stereotype or even the archetype that I would uh, choose to represent the toreador. And, and this illustration, she just has like... Um, her eyes are, are so big, almost anime-like, not exactly, but in proportion, in comparison with the rest of her face, with her um, large nose and, and mouth, it, it makes no sense that they uh, place such big features on her face. So I'm not really too fond of the artwork. It doesn't look terrible, but I think it could have been better, because let me show you this illustration of the older edition of Vampire the Masquerade, the 1995 edition, if I'm not mistaken. And this looks a lot more on the Toreador side of things. Uh, you see this uh, woman uh, that is looking for a certain balance in the way she dresses with accessories. Mm. And we don't know, uh, because it's a black and white illustration, we don't know what color combination she's going to use, but it feels a bit more aesthetically balanced and it's still she still expresses that sense of femininity, in my opinion, uh, when compared to the other one that looks a lot more mannish, but I guess opinions may vary. Now, let's talk about the Tremere. Uh, well... <laughs> First, let's talk about the illustration, because I, I really dislike this one. This one uh, looks... If the other one look, looked mannish, this really looks like a manly woman again. I don't know why they, they ruined the artwork like this, because perhaps if it were a clan where all the women were supposed to look as with like men as much as possible, like it's a priority of the clan, I will understand this. But when you're using one of these images to represent and the entirety of the characteristics or character of a, of a clan you should be using something more stereotypical or, or even archetypical so this new illustration she looks ah she kind of i guess some would like this particular character but she looks a bit ugly to me and uh, trying too hard to look manly when we compare it to the older illustration uh, she looks a lot more stylish and uh, i really like the 
Mm, the symbols that she is wearing that expresses that occult theme of the Tremere that we will talk about in a few minutes. I think she's holding a copy of the Book of Nod because of the arrangement of the skulls, if I'm not mistaken. And because, even though her way of dressing is quite, mm, I guess you could say classical, uh, somewhat in the 1940s style of things, she still mm, expresses that femininity as well. Again, I don't understand why they tried to make all these women look so manly. If you have seen my other... Uh, reviews of the clans you will see that many of the female illustrations they look quite manly so it looks uh, somewhat bizarre and i prefer the older outwork uh, older artwork now let's talk about the tremere the tremere are unique amongst all of the vampire clans the tremere are the uh, quintessential ambitious upstarts there could be some other candidates, I guess, but the difference is that the Tremere began as humans. If, if I'm not mistaken, the Tremere first appeared in the Ars Magica role-playing game as a cabal of um, human wizards. And here it's kind of like the version of what if. What, what if the Tremere decided to become vampires? And they didn't exactly wish it like that. They just were looking for immortality. Because that's, um, I guess you could say, archetypical in the uh, uh, mage lore and all of that. They're always looking for immortality. So the Tremere were trying to, to attain that. And I'm not exactly sure, I, I don't remember exactly how it happened. But there came a point where they actually came upon this antediluvian of the Saulot clan. And they, uh, well arcanely diabolized this antediluvian took the power of the vampire and uh, thinking that it would make them immortal and i'm not i don't remember it before that or after that they also used simitsi blood in the ritual and they also um, took some gangrel and turned them into gargoyles and eventually the, the results of their experiments uh, ended up with the entire tremere clan becoming vampires so they are upstarts, and many of the vampire clans uh, look down upon them because they li look like humans who want to play, uh, uh, want to, to be vampires. So, uh, but they, their power is still evident. But some of the clans hate them quite a bit because the Salot, even though, uh, well, it depends on the individual because some Salot are more warlike when compared to others, but they have good reasons to hate the Tremere because the Tremere killed their uh, progenitor. And because the Tremere aren't uh, related directly to Cain, they can't trace their bloodline to him, they are hated for, by some of the, uh, or disliked by some of the traditional, more traditional clans, like for example the Simitsi, who also dislike it that they use their blood to do some rituals. They hate the Tremere, and the Bruja actually liked uh, the Saulot Antediluvian, and they also dislike the Tremere. And the Gangrel, because the Tremere have captured Gangrel and turned them into these mindless, well, not mindless, but easy to control for them servants known as the Gargoyles, that we, I will talk about in some other part of my review. There are many clans after the Tremere. So what do you do when you have everyone after you, <laughs> almost everyone? You need to look for powerful allies and they turn to the Ventru. Because the Ventru are the most influential when it comes to the masquerade scheme um, or plan, the uh, Ventru, they struck a bit of a, like a deal with the Ventru. They would provide Ventru with arcane... Uh, powers and aid as long as the Ventru kept them safe because the Ventru uh, when it comes to magical or occult matters they would have to resort to dealing with the uh, Cappadocians later on with the Giovanni but now they have the Tremere who are willing and ready to use their magic in favor of the Ventru so it hasn't been easy for the Tremere to find their place in the in, in the Jihad or in the mas or even in the masquerade so they have to develop and adapt their magics to their vampiric condition because their human magic simply did not apply to the way they now have to rely on vitae or human blood and the blood they take from others and so now they have developed their own uh, new magical discipline that I will talk a bit about in a few minutes when it comes to the, their se the sect itself 
This is one of the uh, strongest pillars of the Camarilla. Through their magic, they support the Camarilla, uh, mainly because uh, this somewhat peaceful and civilized approach will give them opportunity to experiment and continue their own plans. And uh, because, the, again, they have that uh, sort of deal or arrangement with the Vendru. In their appearance, they look uh, quite a traditional, um, classical and somewhat eldritch. That is, you could see them wearing these suits that I was telling you are somewhat in the 1940s side of things. And uh, they also have amulets or talismans hanging from them and they are usually ha carrying some books of occult studies. So they, they are somewhat easy to recognize. And when it comes to their haven, well, their main base of operations is in Vienna but they have different places known as uh, chantries and chantries work almost like uh, large houses of occult studies and they also have alchemical laboratories and dungeons and they also work serve as safe houses because the clans never know when they're going to be attacked they surround these places with all sorts of guardians like the gargoyles or some ghouls and um, magical barriers of different sorts when it comes to the background of the Tremere, they're always looking for people with a brilliant mind and a strong willpower because they consider them the only ones able to understand the mysteries of the occult and handle any miscalculation or unforeseen circumstances from their rituals and ceremonies. And the Tremere are very strict when it comes to um, who remains and who belongs to the clans. To the Tremere clan. There are some Tremere's that uh, successfully escaped to the Sabbat, but uh, the Tremere take uh, great care in trying to hunt them down because they don't want their secrets to be revealed to others. When it comes to their clan disciplines, they have aspects just like the Toreador, they are quite uh, skilled at perceiving things, even those things that are more on the occult or ethereal side of things. They also have Dominate, that they can actually uh, make puppets out, out of others through their uh, this willpower-based sort of discipline. And then they have uh, Thaumaturgy. Thaumaturgy is probably one of the most complex disciplines, and it has different paths, and not all of them are popular. I remember a lot of, a lot of players avoided the uh, uh, Path of Blood. It, it's just that... Um, when it comes to a path of blood, you ha really have to specialize yourself or invest some time before it uh, uh, brings the desired results. Otherwise, you're going to the only thing that's going to be useful for is detecting some things about blood when you taste it, or um, making uh, yourself on, or others spend some blood to enhance some physical attributes, and that could induce frenzy, so it's not a, at its lower tiers that this uh, path of discipline is not very useful because uh, it's, you're basically making someone angry at you at times <laughs> when using that and making that um, character stronger. It could be useful when you want to bolster your allies and they cannot spend blood, uh, too many blood points per turn, you can actually affect that your advantage but when it comes to an enemy trying to get that enemy angry at you and and making your enemy stronger is not exactly useful although in later uh, steps of the path you do get some cool powers like uh, uh, making the blood of your enemies burn if i'm not mistaken but there are some other more interesting paths that our players are usually more interested in like there's a path i don't, don't remember the name i think it was the path of flames that allows you to produce and control fire there is another one that uh, is basically like disintegrating others but that is more on the side of the sabbat uh, and there is also one that is kind of like telekinesis and some path that allows you to manifest things, etc. We'll talk a bit more about those later on when I talk about disciplines in other parts of my review. Now, the weakness of the term here is that they are highly dependent of blood in, in two ways. Because they are constantly using powers uh, of the thaumaturgy that are filled by vitae or blood, and they need blood quite a bit, and they are forced to uh, become some... Uh, they develop a stronger bond to their elders. And that's a general weakness of the Tremere because they have been indoctrinated since their very beginning 
uh, they are quite easy to control if they uh, drink other vamp another vampire's blood. One normally takes uh, three draughts of another vampire's blood. For a Tremere to become bloodbound, the, the, sorry, for a vampire to become bloodbound, a Tremere only need two. So this is a way that their elders uh, keep a tight leash upon them, so that there are no there are no traitors to the vampire clan that rule the the occult secrets. But and but because of that, the Tremere are probably one of the most, if not the most, organized clan of all the vampire clans because they need that organization and control if they want to survive against so many clans that are out there trying to destroy them. When it comes to the stereotypes, the Tremures usually uh, act like rivals towards clans that are more on the intellectual side of things, but you always sense like the Tremure are ready to backstab uh, anyone as long as they fulfill some secret uh, plan. Not so much as, for example, um, the Asamite or their followers of Set, but if the Tremere uh, find that they can have the upper hand upon someone, they are going to take that chance. So let's talk about some of these stereotypes. When it comes to the Giovanni that are necromancers, the Tremere say, their clumsy understanding of the secret ways will shackle them to empty ritual rather, rather than set them free to work their wheels. And when it comes, for example, to the Ravnos, who are illusionists, they say, Disorder sows its own punishments, yet I am happy to expedite those results. And when it comes to Bentru, that they depend quite a bit of them, they, they say, Caesar shall have his due, and to our benefit, his love of lucre blinds him to true power. And so, as you can see, they are already thinking about uh, perhaps um, betraying the Bentru in their quest for power. So this is probably one of the most sinister clans, but still quite interesting because of their, their um, occult secrets and rituals and vampiric magics. Now what do I think of the Toreador and the Tramir? Well, these clans are not the easiest ones in, uh, for someone who has just begun playing Vampire the Masquerade because their roles are either too specific or uh, too broadly distributed in the larger scheme of things. Because the Toreador, for example, are not the best fighters, but they are also not defenseless when it comes to their celerity and presence. Uh, so I would consider them more useful in um, Chronicles, where there is more social, a lot of social interaction, but I mean a lot, like it's the main focus and very little combat, because they are well suited for investigations and um, interacting with other kindred and, and putting like a facade that they are friendly and then uh, trying to figure out something, some plan, some hidden agenda on the side. And when it comes to the Tremere, because they don't get along with a lot of the clans, it's somewhat difficult to introduce them in a cutlery um, without them uh, without feeling like outcasts or enemies of the others, perhaps if you have like clans that are not too interested in destroying them, like perhaps the Ventru or the Toreador, you could have a, a working group like that, but the, the, the Tremere uh, really have to look out for themselves and it's quite easy and, and should be done by the storyteller that uh, they are in a somewhat state of paranoia as to because they have so many enemies. But still, under uh, thaumaturgy, it feels like you have a choice of many different dif disciplines within one single discipline. So you have to think on what, what you want your Tremere character to do if you're going to be perhaps a bit more on the fighting side of things. You definitely should take uh, something like the Path of Flames or perhaps um, that uh, path that allows you to use this sort of like telekinesis but otherwise you will have to find some creative ways of using the other paths of these disciplines in combination with your aspects and dominate nonetheless uh, two very cool clans that um, despite their eccentricity you can find a way to uh, fit them in almost any chronicle as long as it doesn't contradict the, their essence or their true nature in the uh, whole uh, scheme of the Jihad. Well, uh, thanks for watching um, my review of these two clans. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. See you later.